Welcome to the next session of the Android Software Platform. In this session, uh, we will uh, go through some of the testing aspects and the setup configuration. And uh, we will, uh, from this session, we will uh, look into some of the test uh, names uh, what are the tests. Uh, that is means the uh, test diagram, test time, MCD, test driver, and other things. So, then we will uh, try to understand in the different types of testing, test harness, uh, test setup, basically what it comes to. And we will uh, go through the link of the test setup uh, mechanism. Then, uh, the tools and uh, how tools will be used in the industry. Okay. As I have uh, briefed earlier uh, in earlier session, uh, uh, different levels of testing uh, basically categorized uh, into three levels the unit level uh, testing, integration testing, system testing. I have not included acceptance testing because uh, that is uh, not the core uh, in terms of uh, the engineering variables. That is something like uh, user level uh, acceptance testing. So that could be a subset of any of these three. Could be a subset of uh, one, two, three, or basically they use system testing uh, outputs as uh, a credit. And uh, in addition, they will uh, take the sample and uh, uh, for business purpose they use. So, in terms of the core engineering uh, and software testing activities, so these are the three levels of testing. Uh, in this diagram, you can see a different blocks. The same blocks have been uh, rearranged for different types of uh, testing. Uh, the first level of testing we will uh, see component or unit testing. If there are suppose uh, 12 models in the inbuilt software, M1, M3, M3, M4, the still M12, each unit will have to be tested separately as a component. So, whatever the interfaces that component has to do, or whatever the input it takes and uh, produces the output at that level, uh, we need to test it. Of course, there are uh, subsystems. Uh, which may have a more uh, subcomponents like M4 may have M4.1, uh, M4.2. You can combine that. It is up to the test strategy thing how they want to define it. So, but uh, in a nutshell, uh, uh, the basic modules we have identified and they will be used for component testing or key testing. Coming to the next integration testing. Here, what we do. We take the same example of uh, 12 modules for an MA system. These 12 modules are logically grouped. Uh, basically, uh, it is based on the mostly based on the functionality of the feature set. Uh, this block one, block two, block three, block four. Uh, here you see M12 as a single block. Uh, you may be wondering why M12 is tested here as well as here. The idea behind integration is uh, this M12 could have an uh, binding on hardware or any subsystem software. So that needs to be integrated. Why that is needs to be integrated is we need to exercise that as a module, how it works with the other module. How M12 can integrate with M8 and M9, M9. how M12 can integrate with M10 and M11, etc. So, Going by this picture, uh, there are uh, four uh, blocks. Each block is of interest. Other blocks will be tested completely. So all this integrated together, how it is behaving, so that is what the scope of integration is. Next one is the system system. As I said earlier, all the blocks are stuck together in the box. So if you consider uh, these blocks as a one, and it's in uh, and it's in target. 
So that target will be basically sending to different uh, testing aspects, uh, the signal or the IO, whatever it is, will be put, and uh, the output will be expected as a black box. Uh, most of the realistic uh, inputs will be put into here, and uh, that will be tested again. So that is the default basically with integration. Here, uh, I'll repeat. So, component level or unit level is still we do individual components or units tested uh, separately. The integration we combine uh, several blocks or components together to test it on the software level, software to software or software to hardware. And in system testing, all blocks should be up and running in the in target, and that target will be provided with several inputs and the expected uh, results will be fed out as an output value and that means a tested against first value. So all these three levels of testing uh, is necessary why because we may not be able to test everything with the system testing, we may not be able to test everything with the integration testing, we may not be able to test with the individuals that is not enough. So Putting all this together, and that can be seen as an example as a complete. Uh, you please don't get confused with uh, on the bottom of top off and down. That is all the approach or the method how it is done. Here, uh, basically, given an embedded system, how we are going to test it, how we are going to break the main uh, system into several modules, and how we are going to test it. So that is the philosophy behind the, the level of testing. You can test it as a unit for all this and one to one. So likewise we uh, here in this case, uh, some feature or uh, functionality is used for this block say block 1, integrated one you will have a feature set feature 1 and uh, block 2 might have a uh, set of functions required for uh, some other place that will be done. Satisfying that, or uh, the structure what is implemented is not matching the engineering structure. That is the goal of uh, unit testing, no end under test to address all those things. Next is the integration testing. 
integration with the process of uh, creating components to create larger components. As I said, uh, the components are aggregated together to create larger components. So components could be M1, M4, M3, M6, M7, M8, M9, etc. It could be one component as well. Integration testing done to that even the integration testing the what we do integration is the first one components to create larger components as I said uh, smaller components uh, are put together as blocks of 1, 2, 3, 4 whatever it is M1, M2, M3, M4 these blocks are combined together and uh, we will test again is the their interactions between the modules M1, M2, M3, M4 first then as a group or as a block how it is interacting with other blocks like M5, M6, M7 or any other blocks of components. So that is the intention. Integration testing done to show that even though components were easily satisfactory the combination is incorrect or inconsistent. That means as I said you would have tested individually M4, M3, M7, M11, whatever it is, that may be working fine, but when you integrate M11 with M12, so, so what is the guarantee that uh, it is working appropriately or correctly? So, in order to do that, we will integrate it. So, that is the purpose of integration testing. So, the combination should be correct and consistent. So, that is the goal. The last one is the system testing. Yeah, system is the big component. As I said, it's a black box. System testing is aimed at revealing bugs that cannot be attributed to a component as such to inconsistencies between components or planned interactions between components. Still, you see, there could be some issues after putting together all these blocks. That means while first block is interacting with the second block and while the third block or fourth block is interacting with the fifth block continuously within the system there could be some issues uh, especially when you trigger the inputs or the signal all together working should work correctly and consistently. So how do you bring up those issues that is through the system testing. So system testing is aimed at revealing bugs that cannot be attributed to a component as such to inconsistencies between components or planned interactions between components. Concerns, issues, behaviors that can only be exposed by testing the entire integrated system. So that is what the purpose of it, uh, especially the performance, uh, security, timing, recovery, uh, these are some of the aspects uh, will have issues when you test at a higher level. So, the uh, problem still is that sometimes it is uh, difficult to isolate. Uh, suppose I say the performance is not up to what is expected. Having with the entire system put under uh, system testing and I see there is a memory leak. I see there is a timing uh, slack. Uh, I do not know where it is the problem is. So, how will you isolate? So that is one of the concern that uh, we have at system testing. But of course, definitely this individual level, uh, either at the unit level or integration level, it may not be able to find out. Uh, how do we do it? So there are several uh, mechanisms for doing that, uh, either through debugging, uh, where we uh, uh, do the white box uh, sort of a mechanism, we connect the uh, debugger and do a manual analysis. Using IDE code inspection or walk through etc. So some of these issues uh, or you may use uh, IDE tool such as uh, Profilers or time machines, etc. Uh, these are some of the 
alternates while doing the system testing because uh, some of the critical things uh, may not uh, be found out easily with the system testing. So there are alternates that we will use it. So that is about system testing. Of course, uh, I said that system testing is uh, uncovering the implied requirements aimed at evaluating fitness for use. It's a very uh, selective level. That means uh, some of these uh, system testing uh, tests can be reused to make sure that the product is accepted, and uh, definitely that should not find bugs. Which should have been found in the earlier testing phases. That means integration and unit testing or system testing. These bugs should not be. Uh, whatever the bugs are there, these bugs should be uh, fixed. So accident testing is the last uh, uh, we do before we release the product. Okay. Coming to test hardness, the ML system test hardness. Uh, what it means? A web definition web definition goes by like this a collection of software and test data configured to test a program by running it under various conditions and monitoring its behavior and outputs that means test harness will enable the tester to feed the test data and test the program which is under the subject by Applying various conditions, and uh, that harness should be able to support monitoring the output as well. So it's something like a test setup uh, uh, part of it. It's used for running groups of existing automatic scripts. That means uh, once we have uh, individual tests done, we should be able to run uh, in a speedier way. That means uh, we can group uh, the existing tests. In a batch sort of a mechanism where the environment or the test harness will support. So the harness itself can be a tool for automated running of many scripts. Like we, as I said, we can create batches of scripts, and that batch can be run on the uh, harness in a consistent and uh, continuous manner, so that uh, the testing will be speedier and a lot of automation is involved here. Fetching of scripts and test data. What it does, the automated running of batches is fetching of scripts and test data. Uh, any actions or failures should report as a failure or report the log, etc. Uh, the test and defect metrics uh, or management, like the how many number of passes are there, how much it has failed, like in terms of overall automated batch output. Uh, this will take care. So that is nothing but the test harness. The test harness uh, could involve uh, many things uh, such as uh, uh, invoking a simulator, emulator, or test drivers could be involved as well. So there is a difference uh, from test running tool and test harness so test running tool is something like a uh, underneath a piece of activity test harness is above that which will help uh, in terms of automating and uh, running at a higher level see typically a test harness is like a super test running tool The other uh, name you will this super test running tool. So controlling uh, uh, perhaps a few test running tools. I mean some other sub tools so it can control or trigger or drive it. 
So test hardness can be used to run groups of existing automated test scripts. Its typical activities are uh, fetching, uh, as I said, uh, scripts and test data. Uh, should take actions for failures, and uh, should be able to manage the tests, like report, uh, reporting uh, incident incident reports, uh, defects, pass fail uh, criteria, outputs, and all that will be part of this. So that is about uh, test hardness because this is one of the important element that will be used across all this. Test hardness is very much needed for unit level testing, integration testing, system testing. So test hardness uh, will have its own set of setups for each of these. Okay, so coming to the next slide. This is about uh, test setup. So we know that test hardness is required. Underneath that, uh, what are the things that we need to take care? Embedded software testing uh, test setup. Uh, there are uh, several ways uh, the test setup can be done. It again depends on uh, what level uh, the system is required. I will explain a typical how it is used. Basically, host and target test systems during the development process. That is one thing where you use it. At least during development, again, the developers have to have a confidence on what they have. So they will have a set of host and target interactions. The so same thing can be used for testing also. So we know that host and target are what it means earlier we have discussed two systems will be there uh, hosts will have access six or whatever it is CPUs will be there and target will be having its own architecture or a microcontroller based target system will be there. So one system host generally PC or laptop or workstation will be used other system will have a target or the actual hardware actual hardware uh, can be a microcontroller based or microcontroller plus any other hardware like FPGA or uh, any flash device anything could be which is used under the development. So continuation of that host and target, target independent and target dependent code. So uh, what it means like uh, there are a few code like uh, Hardware related, suppose take microcontroller related or registers which we may use. For example, target specific hardware registers, microcontroller registers, memory. Etc. Those all are called target dependent. Target independent, say that it has this. Target independent is something like uh, uh, we have algorithms, a um, few utilities like uh, conversion utilities, any flow, structure, data structure uh, uh, mechanism. Etc. This is all target independent. That means you don't have a dependency on the target for this piece of software to run. So that is how they categorize it. So same thing is explained here. 
code has two parts hardware independent and hardware dependent code and uh, port port is nothing but uh, a piece of interface uh, which is residing in the target and devices like as I said it could be flash device or any crystal or anything that will have uh, access with the microcontroller using a address so that address are fixed so we cannot uh, use it as a generic so this is one of the setup that is used that means host and target based systems the same thing will be used for development as well as same thing is used for testing so some details about the host testing and debugging at each stage as well as at the final stage when the models are put together that means this will be fixed the different stages of uh, developing and uh, integrating onto the target with the help of host will be done at the same manner uh, in different stages. So testing can be done at the uh, initial stages at the host side that means having developed uh, some piece of software uh, uh, we can use the same host uh, for testing it like whether it is working as expected or not and uh, in the host itself we can uh, use like we do not need to program that onto the target as I said there are independent uh, uh, software code that can be used in the host itself wherein uh, those models like algorithms and those things can be run and tested on the host or the PC. Also there are uh, integrated development environment uh, target based systems uh, which will allow for user to simulate that means that simulator is an application which will be running on the host which can simulate uh, the target that is intended to be used. We will uh, touch base each of uh, these things in detail in the next slides. So this is the definition about target. So this is used to test hardware independent codes. So I think there is a mistake here. It should be hardware dependent codes. And the target is also used to run monitor. That means from the target, uh, anything that we expect to see the output of the test. So we will need some monitoring mechanism. So that monitoring mechanism can be hooked into a target. That is how the target is used. Uh, here is a typical uh, diagram of a host and a target, how it is uh, connected. So, typically, this is used for development. Some of this uh, can definitely be used uh, in a testing also. Like in a testing, we may have to uh, develop some scripts which will uh, use the same interface for testing on the target system. And the scripts will have a dependency on the probe or the test uh, or the development environment hook which will be used for uh, debugging the target system. Uh, and uh, I will brief about this uh, host and target system for the development stage. There is a laptop or desktop which will have an interface with the target system with the help of an IDE. IDE generally uses probes which will probe uh, the registers or the memory and all of the hardware related information through a probe box uh, that is called a JTAG. And there are tools which will interact with this and uh, uh, will allow the user to monitor or put values and all that. So for example IDE integrated development environment we have is a GHS Green Hills from IP Core Warrior uh, etc. And the interface with the JTAG will be usually through USB or Ethernet. So now as I said in the earlier slide how the target system will be used for testing. So once we have the development done we no more require uh, any of the ID or uh, JTAG which is connected to the target system. In lieu of that what we will use is the target system actually connect with the, connected with the real inputs that is realistic values 
with the help of test panel or breakout box that can be used to provide the inputs and uh, to test the values uh, the monitor the values we use uh, interfaces such as scan ethernet or it could be rs232 also uh, i have seen uh, a separate system connected to target system uh, i mean separate interface as well some of the monitoring can be done with the help of that for example rs232 and that all can be segregated in the host uh, with the help of uh, something like uh, testing tools those testing tools will help user identify the failures or run uh, scripts and batches etc okay so we know that uh, there is a target system how it can be set up with the help of this there are different mechanisms that can be used for doing the test setup there are uh, broadly three category having uh, said that uh, we use uh, a different uh, test setups for development and testing the test setup uh, is broadly categorized uh, in uh, three ways uh, testing uh, with simulation testing with emulation and with the help of target monitoring that means the target uh, debugging testing is uh, classified as simulation emulation and target monitoring what are those so we will uh, see each one so target uh, the embedded system target can be tested with the help of simulator so in simulation what it does basically is uh, it uses the knowledge of uh, target processor or the microcontroller and target system architecture at the host side that means on the host processor it means uh, we have seen the host is uh, the desktop or the user uh, station or the laptop so all the information that is required from the target side will be available in a simulation manner so we don't need the target should be running but the host has a knowledge so for that what we need to do is the, the developed code or the code that we have should be compiled cross compiled i think i have explained what is cross compilation and embedded c anyway that is a part of the embedded system basics we use cross compiler where we have the code developed in the host and compiled for the target so that is cross compilation so what we do is we do the cross compilation of the code and place it in the host system ram that means host system will have the compiled code then behavior of the target system processor registers are all simulated with this with this simulator it uses the linker and locator to port the cross compiled codes in ram and functions like the code that would have run at the actual target system that means uh, it's as if the target is running but it will be running in the host with the knowledge of whatever the target uh, it is having in the host so few bullets code tested for the mcu from the community in the host computer used for code development simulates the hardware units like emulator peripherals network input output devices on the host or the workstation it means all the uh, peripherals that it has it's, it tries to <coughs> use it tries to emulate it basically with the help of whatever emulation characteristics that has the simulator remains independent of a particular target system as i said so it doesn't have a dependency on the target the results expected from codes at the target system ram peripherals network or input output devices are obtained at the host system ram uh, i would say it may not be 100% possible with uh, all these devices and uh, the peripherals but 
at least the generic uh, nature of uh, all these uh, memory peripherals and all that should be able to simulate. So that is how they have uh, developed the simulator. Uh, it provides the detailed information of the focus of peripheral devices like uh, it's is running or stop etc with the defined system provides the detailed information of the course of the execution goes on for each single step or each single module. I think uh, one session I will have in terms of debugging uh, testing with the help of ID integrated development environment I think it will be probably more clear with that how do we do it and uh, similar manner simulation also it is uh, not too much away from what we usually use in the debugging environment. Uh, instead of the target system, the host will have a simulation based system. It also supports all the breakpoints like conditional and unconditional breakpoints, etc. These are all uh, some of the simulation breakpoints or the software breakpoints we use for simulator. So, the advantage is. Uh, uh, this helps in the development of the system before the final uh, target system is ready uh, with the help of only a PC as a tool for uh, development that means we do not need to actual target system at least we can uh, progress some development of this thing uh, before we actually get the target. In general in the industry what will happen is uh, uh, I, I think I will explain this in model I mean different models that is used uh, the hardware and software. Uh, planning requirements and development goes parallelly. Hardware is bit ahead of software, hardware is should be ready, but what will happen is uh, uh, it is likely that uh, before the hardware or the actual target is ready, the software piece would have been developed. So, get the confidence of uh, what is being developed, so, we, we use uh, mechanisms such as simulator uh, etc. So, that will be of very much use uh, and it helps for the initial development step and the simulator for available for different processors and processing devices which are targeted for embedded systems. So, most of the processors or the microcontrollers that they develop definitely there are simulators available most of them like you take microcontrollers such as AI based or Motorola based or ARM whatever it is they will have simulators we can use for simulation. The same simulator can be used for studio testing especially the same code we can build the target and that code can be tested especially for unit testing this will be useful where we use the individual modules and those modules can be simulated if possible like as I said the algorithms or software flow states etc can be definitely tested with the so simulator if not at all. So, but simulator will have some disadvantages those are timing and the speed issues cannot be resolved as I said the actual timing of the microcontroller or the processor with the actual load of the signals or with the actual peripherals or devices connected. So, definitely will vary than whatever the simulation. So, those issues we may not be able to test completely because of the calculation of process speed and the host will not be adequately mapped. We may map one piece or one processor or peripheral, but all cannot be synced easily with the help of simulator. And of course, as I said, hardware dependent testing like we have a some of the baud rate or the interfaces connected for spy or spy interfaces we may not be able to test it. And of course, we have developed the code in the host environment and cross compiled and the net simulation and they should be able to port it as it is on the target without difficulty, but since there are some issues especially on the binding or accessing the memory or big Indian little Indian format issues uh, definitely there are a few things 
which has a simulator uh, lags. That is about a simulator, and uh, we go to emulation next. So that is the next technique uh, which will actually use the end target. Uh, one thing I remember in terms of uh, simulator before one day is that, uh, for example, the target system may have 8 bit data bus between RAM and uh, uh, one pipeline or the memory map processor, uh, and uh, host may be having a pipeline processor, and uh, it could be a 32 bit. So, there is a difference uh, with the target system and the host. Uh, similarly, simulator may fail to show a bug from shared data as it arises from an interrupt in some particular situation only. Uh, like uh, you may be aware of the interrupt, some interrupts uh, can come at a real time. The simulator we may not be able to do. Uh, so, these are some of the disadvantages which I think that we cannot use a simulator. We should definitely use the next techniques, it is emulation. So, what is an emulator? It is also called as an in circuit emulator. So, basically, which actually takes the in circuit values and uh, uh, will provide the user a gist of what are the values that is going on with the target. So, which will actually emulate so what is needed. Similarly, user can uh, put the values into that uh, registers with the help of emulators. So, emulator is also known as in circuit emulator IC. Circuit for emulating target system remains independent of a particular target trade system and processor. Emulator or IC provides great flexibility and ease for developing the various applications on a single system in place of testing that multiple target system. That means we have a batch of different target systems, but many of the components are the same then we can use an emulator on one system and uh, probably <coughs> it will ease out for developing the different applications on different target systems. Uh, suppose some sensors are connected to the MCU that can be emulated. Emulates uh, controlled outputs for the peripheral interfaces system that means we actually use the peripherals or the interfaces which can be triggered or which can be controlled with the help of emulator. Emulator emulates a target MCU outputs and socket to connect to externally MCU. Suppose one more MCU or other MCU goes, so we can have a multiple emulator or the single emulator connected to the first MCU and it can be hooked or socketed with the other MCU because there are complex systems where we have multiple microcontrollers, so both have to be used. And uh, both will have some interface, uh, some inputs and outputs. So, uh, how do we do it? Definitely, this is not possible with the help of simulator. We have to use the emulation technique. So, what emulator uh, does is we developed, uh, we develop, uh, we compiled for the target, and uh, it produces the object files. Those object files. Uh, and the binary or the image or the microcontrollers uh, which is required will be used by the emulator. It uses the debugger at the computer the files of the MCU application. That means there is a debugger. The debugger will have a knowledge of the entire MCU. And uh, MCU corresponding uh, applications uh, can be debugged. With the help of the emulator, this emulator why it has come for testing, you may ask, because emulator is definitely used for developing. It can also be used, or more or less, it is used for testing also, because some of the testing may not be possible with the help of uh, automated way or as a black box without the uh, with the target uh, not having connected with the development environment. Why? Because some of the uh, intricacies within the target system uh, need to be inspected with the help of code. So, 
uh, user uh, tester has to go through the test code or the code on the target. So how do you how do uh, he do? How does he do is with the help of emulation? So emulation uh, that is why it used for testing also. That is why we have uh, taken up is uh, as the one of the technique in terms of target debugging and testing. The next one is uh, target monitoring. So, what is monitoring? Uh, monitoring is an uh, output activity from the target system used for uh, embedded system testing. So, what are the elements? Uh, so monitoring is a resident program of the target based uh, system which is connected with the host. As I said, uh, the connection could be RS232 or uh, any of the interfaces the interface could be or structure to generally they use or can also is used in many places control area network. So, for this uh, I think uh, I mean uh, we definitely need uh, some program which is residing in the target system because that has to interface with RS232 and it has to pump in some data to the host and the host has to acknowledge and host can request that RG system also for that it has to respond. So, there is a handshake involved. Uh, for the between the target system and the host. So for that, uh, a dedicated uh, monitoring application is needed on the both side, uh, host side as well as on the target. Uh, monitoring uh, monitors the target system events and data and communicates them to the PC. As I said, it uses the interface and uh, comes in the data to the target. The computer interface commands command the Interpreter that means uh, for retrieving the data or analyzing data, it may has to it may have to send some commands and respond for the data. So it uses some commands. There is a protocol or the handshake involved between the target board and the host. Generally, the commands are read and write. Uh, mostly, they are used for memory registers operations. And also, there are uh, systems which uses the same interface for downloading the uh, target application. That is, the image, the binary onto the target can be downloaded with the app of PC. So, these are some of the target based debugging or testing mechanisms. With the help of test setup, test setups we have seen how it will be. Next one is the tools. So we will conclude this session with the tools with the tools list example, and in the end we will touch base a few. Uh, embedded system testing words. So it's like something like a recap of uh, what we have studied so far, or what we would like to study. So these are some of the words that has to be a part of a tester. You should be knowledgeable enough anytime to talk on this jargon. Okay, so embedded system testing uh, has to have a list of tools, and uh, this should be a well documented. Uh, Tools list with additional information of the tools usage guidelines, etc. And these all these tools should be referred or mapped in the test plan. We have seen how the test plan looks like, and that should have a reference to all these tools or a tools document. 
and that should be controlled or configured with the help of configuration management and any change over the period of testing or development or the entire life cycle definitely will have an impact why it has an impact because whatever we intended to use whatever we want to develop scripts or tests on one version of the world may not work on the next version so that is for example so similarly any checklist or guideline part of this usage of the tool or any changes happens that has to be controlled so any deviations that has to be taken care of with the of deviation process along with the impact so definitely there is a impact on the whole test cycle wherever there is a impact that needs to be mitigated so embedded software uh, testing tools so we will go through an example how it is listed i need to share this this uh, you can uh, use a template as uh, what we did uh, in the earlier stages like test plan and uh, procedures cases i have not put the uh, template probably as one of the exercise we can have all these tools there is an example i have put it here maybe there is an exercise we can take it up during the practical session to list out all the tools and uh, its usage uh, as part of the template so the template looks like something like the tool information the tool name uh, when and how to use so is all and of course we can have a, a tool version as part of this only or configuration information also can be. so this is a template that generally they use for tools and i have a, for this course uh, planning to use some of the tools listed below uh it depends on the availability and other things and uh, as an example i have listed out here below uh typically target based system as i said will have 8 bit 16 bit or 32 bit microcontroller uh along with that uh, we should have an id development environment for compiling debugging and uh, testing the developed software for that we use uh, evaluation boards uh we can target to use a 8051 based or arm 6 or 7 or 9 based dvps these are all available in the market we can uh, use it for testing once we have this target based system we need to have the requirements as an input that is anyway part of this phase so we will develop the test case then we will do the test case design documentation and reporting this can be with the help of documentation uh, microsoft word or excel can be used once we lay out uh, the test uh, procedures we need to have scripting mechanism scripting can be done with the help of python or perl I'm not sure uh, how many of you are aware of this. Uh, this is near to any other scripting tool. Like uh, you can take, for example, shell scripting, Linux, or DOS in Windows. So that also will have uh, command line arguments and all that. So this can be uh, used for scripting. and uh, this is an open source so you can always uh, download and use it and for testing uh, we know that we have to use static analysis reviews and all that uh, for that uh, one recommended tool is atterstack for testing from uh, sky tools this also there is a evaluation they give it actually uh, this is a good tool uh, why because uh, uh it uh, gives up a complete uh, code picture or something like a call tree and all that it produces 
it also gives a uh, configuration output how the code is organized in terms of uh, data code we can apply the rules the coding rules and uh, we can see many of the uh, other aspects like complexity of course it is called software complexity i will uh, i think one of the session i will uh, explain what is software complexity is basically how complex uh, the target system is about it tells the number basically uh, for any embedded system mostly there has to be some uh, limit on the complexity uh, beyond that it cannot be uh, developed so we use that uh, understand for c++ for static analysis but test defect uh, management we use a tool called test link for testing we use a test link it manages all the test cases procedures test suite also and of course the scripts also we can link it with the help of uh, this uh, testing uh, tool it doesn't test but it helps us to manage that is called test link Similarly, once we have tested with the help of this test case procedure and all that, we can link them the pass fail result or reports like failures can be controlled. I mean, can be managed with the help of defect management tool called Bugzilla. It's one of the open source good tool. Of course, this test link is also an open source tool, and we can use for same test link and formula for configuration control also. That means we you know changes will happen, versioning is to be there, etc. All this can be taken care with that. This test link and formula it itself has a uh, flavor of configuration. So this is an example of test tool. So that is about uh, tools. Okay. So in this session, uh, we have gone through different levels of testing. Uh, component or unit integration system. What is unit testing? What is integration testing? What is system testing? Test harness. Uh, what it means? Setup. A typical embedded software testing setup. How it will be. Uh, in specific uh, host and target based system. How it will be developed. Or how it will be used. Is a development <coughs> test setup. Is a Uh, real environment testing setup, and uh, how we can test. Having said that, all this environment is available with the help of three techniques: simulation based, simulation based, target based monitoring. So simulation, uh, sorry, simulation uh, use uh, the target based knowledge available in the host, and all the uh, interfaces and the processor can be simulated at the host. we know that uh, always a separate can be used that has a disadvantages in terms of hardware dependency and all that and in those cases we use emulation which will actually use the in circuit uh, emulation technique in terms of bringing up all the hardware uh, values into the host and with the help of host we will write the right and all that values into the target And the same target can also be used for programming the multiple object files or different programs. The next technique is the target monitor, where there is a already built program running on the target, which will have an interface with the host, and there are commands for read and write with the help of which the target is interacted. And uh, the setup has to be configured and controlled. 
with the help of software environment configuration. Uh, it is called uh, environment configuration uh, index, which will list out all the tools. Uh, what is the environment you complete? This should be mapped with the test plan and embedded software tools. We have seen an example. So, what are the tools? And what are the information that should be used for listing out and how to use it? And any changes over the period of testing has to be taken as a deviation. Okay, so we will we have I have listed out some of the testing words. Probably the next exercise will be to put a at least a single word definition for this so my next exercise or question is something like okay so It means put a one sentence answer for some of the words which we have gone through in this course. Uh, test harness, what is test harness? You can put a one more one line definition or put a small paragraph. Test bed. Test bed and test bench both are same. It used it is used in different context. In some industry they use as test bed, some industry they use as a test bench. And uh, the actual environment that is used will have something name something like automated test equipment ATE and of course this we are not done model based testing we will touch base in the next class. I have listed out all the words so what are the words that we have gone through you can put one sentence answer. The stubs I think we have not seen test driver we have not seen fault injection nothing but error injection or fault triggering. We have MCDC uh, that will be covered under the testing in the later stage. Test hook, we know that test hooks will be used for uh, testing uh, the target system where the hooks will uh, accept the user inputs and uh, provides uh, user uh, monitoring mechanism. Boot software, a uh, boot up program, boot loader, which will help in uh, loading the uh, new application. IO is an input output, ICT is an interface control document. Uh, basically, in uh, ML industry, they use this document primarily to define the interfaces. This is a separate requirement for document, sort of a thing. Uh, this will define all the inputs and outputs for the system as well as the requirements. Uh, we know what is breakpoint, we know what is simulator, what is emulator. Trace, I uh, think this is part of the emulation or emulator. Uh, you can uh, define what is trace, profile, for uh, profiling some of the memory and all, we can use it. And uh, for target processor, we use a data sheet. Data sheet is used for uh, as a reference manual. From microcontroller such as ARM, Savannah, etc. So, this is one of the need that embedded system tester has to have. Why? Because uh, he needs to have a knowledge of the microcontroller which is under test, and uh, every microcontroller uh, will have a data or it is a erroneous information which will explain about any of the bugs or errors still it is available in the microcontroller which user should be aware of. You know what is ice in circuit emulator. The question is please provide an one line answer for some of the words that we have used in this course. 
So that's all about uh, today's course, and uh, next time we will have a place on the next session.